All right, we are recording. Good morning or good afternoon. <laughs> good morning to you too. Yeah. So we'll we just say are, hi. Just say hi. We are back for another video about the spiritual books for the month of May. We are a bit late because I have been traveling, we have been busy, and I spent some time off uh, offline. I'm going to talk about that in another video. But for today, we want to share with you the books that uh, had an impact on us for May and also why, and just like bringing you something new. So Maggie, Chris, uh, how are you doing for May? We've had a quite a difficult month. So uh, <laughs> that's one of the reasons we're a little bit behind. Yeah. And... Uh, but we've, we've also learned a lot. There's a lot of information coming in. So things are changing. So uh, go ahead, Meg. Okay, yeah, I, I had a lot of difficulty finding a book this time because so many I, I wanted to re, um, read and review or should I buy something new? And that was, I, I would get, get them, start reading them. That was no, no, no. And then in the end, I came down and said, okay, show me, show me the book. And they did. And they showed me this book. Can you see it? Yes. That's the book. And it's one of the books I first read when I started. I thought, okay, now why are you showing me this book? And they were explaining that with, with our book, we tell you how to um, remove certain things from your body and complete detail. And you can either you can do it on your own or you can ask us for help, which is great. And then it was talk, we, we were talking about the book we did together where you can go to get your um, tarot cards. And once again, you can do it on your own, but you can also go to somebody else as well. And so I said, well, what other aspects of healing can I look at? And they showed me this book, The Healing Energy of Your Hands. And what I found when I was taking courses was a lot of people started the course and they never finished them because they realized that they didn't actually want to do the whole course they wanted they wanted to heal but not to um to learn everything to, to be healed by but they, they would go to other people however what they were learning when they were in the class was little techniques which they could take and use at home and this book is very very good for that it tells you techniques you can use on yourself or, or on other people if you really want to but it's basically basically designed for you to help yourself Mm -hmm. And then you can use that as a stepping stone if you want to, to go to other things. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, I found it very interesting. And he defines um, energy, but not as positive, negative. He said it's, it's either light or it gets denser and denser and denser. So he said, I don't like putting um, something negative, making something negative, because he said that's it's like good, bad, and you don't want bad. And uh, so he doesn't like that aspect. And he talks about the different um, the types of energy. And you've got your personal energy, which you can use. Then there's the psychic energy, which you can use when you focus that your attention on something. And then you take the next step and you've got your spiritual energy. And that's when you involve, when you start meditating and you're involving um, your guides and other, other beings. And he said, they're all, they're all different, but they're all important. And then he talks about how to use them and how really how by focusing your energy with the positive thoughts, you are bringing about a healing, which you couldn't do if you just say, oh, I want this to be better. I want that to be better. He said, you really focus your energy on something and that helps to bring it about. But not only that, you've... You don't take a small area, you go to a bigger area. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a small area here or you here and you, you go bigger mm -hmm. because the energy doesn't just stay there, it radiates around. So he says making sure that you um, really look at the whole whole picture as opposed to just a little bit of the picture. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was that's a good point because that's when you, when you do polarity, you have to do the, the different aspects, the positive, negative, neutral. And so that fitted in with my belief. Um, he then went on to talk about the, the, the different types of energy coming into your body 
whether they're self-created or created by somebody else, which I thought was important as well, because most people don't think of that. Um, and then once again, he gives you exercises on how to release these, these thoughts. And then he gives lots and lots and lots of techniques and just simple techniques, put your hand here, put your hand there. And how I think the one technique I've seen in many, many books is the drain for pain. And that's where you put the left hand on the pain and you visualize a tube in your hand. You bring it up your arm, cross your chest and down your right arm and you point to the ground and then you you visualize the energy coming up from the pain into your into the tube there and all the way along and then and then just releasing it into the ground until you can you can't feel it anymore and he said that's very good but now you've got to fill that space up with something more positive and then he shows you how to do that and i found that useful because that's a technique we use yes, isn't it yes, but definitely. there are other techniques simple simple techniques which you can use and i think once you get confidence with working with yourself that gives you confidence to go on and do something else and so that from that perspective i like that book i didn't realize how many books he'd written <laughs> he's, he's apparently he's written oh, about eight or nine books since this one but i i thought it was a very good if you're interested in helping yourself and just um but not willing at this point to go into a big class to learn something you can see if you've got a, a feel for it well, it's like a first aid thing yes um it's a really essential to have that in your toolkit and if you know if you fall and twist your ankle or something like that you've immediately got a first aid thing to do to help you can do the drain for pain mm. you can uh, basically smooth out any energy kinks that are there yeah uh, make sure the energy is flowing smoothly through the body so it's something you can use on a regular basis and it's always available when you need it because it's your hands <laughs> yes really interesting also to use what is available to us for self-healing. I know for myself, for example, if I am having like really difficult time, I might forget who I really am and uh, forget the powers that mm -hmm. I have. So it's like when we are in vulnerable, very vulnerable place, we might forget the power that is, you know, within. So, you know, like we are powerless and thus we don't use these tools and we don't even believe in them so there is also the belief system um, and i i know that chris you 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 wrote about in thriving into thriving into the new vibration and the guidebook also um like you know the belief system and how it is important oh, it's, oh, so it's important. crucial isn't yeah, it yes absolutely. and when you've hurt yourself it's very easy to say oh, i can't do that and give away your power to somebody else but that's the time when you actually need to start using these techniques yourself and when you dwell on the pain and you yeah. go inside but you don't you don't think about what you can do yourself to help mm. yes one of the techniques that you remind me of is uh, merlin have ha, has inspired me also to get out of the pain or the wrong belief system through writing which is one of my best ways to get out things because when you write down things you it's like it's like something is getting out of your energy field. Yes. So there is really something physical that that is written down that is taken out of you. Um, and when you see, it's like, is this mine or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this sounds like really weird? <laughs> and it's like a package that comes. So um, yeah, it's really really interesting that the way uh, you brought that, um, Chris. I know also that you brought. Uh, a book for for this time um yeah. but it's more nice um, to your work i'm actually cheating a little bit i'm bringing our workbook thriving in the new vibration workbook mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you've actually <coughs> hit on a few points because there's so many of these things we need we need on a in our toolkit and we provide them in this workbook and an easy way to get into it but before I talk about the workbook, I want to go back and look at what's happening in the world and 
why the workbook is very important at this time. You know, I asked myself the question, why has life become so strange? Yeah. Um, as we struggle for our daily, with our daily lives, it is important to remember that there's a bigger picture going on. At this point in time, many people are coming to crossroads in their lives and they have to decide what future they really want for themselves and from the world. There really is a battle going on between light and dark and it does have an impact on us and it impacts what we do and what happens to us. As a human race, we've actually reached this point many times before and whole civilizations have actually crashed and then been re rebuilt up. So we are in a very important part or very important time in our life. And this is basically why life feels so strange to us because we're at a critical point in human history. And a lot comes down onto us and what our choices are and what decisions we make. We have to pick a side and choose a direction. The earth herself is actually evolving. Mm. And she's going through a lot of physical changes. She releases trapped energy as part of this evolution. And we're feeling that released energy in a, in a number of places. Um, we've been advised against walking in particular parks because at that point, she was releasing a lot of negative energy in, in that area. And so to go there would bring our vibration down. So now she has released that energy and it's dissipated, we can go there safely. Yeah. So we have to be aware of what's going on around us and really think about it. We're seeing many more natural disasters happening at the moment. Yeah. But they're not really natural disasters. They're the earth cleansing itself. Yeah. So it, it, it's a little bit different. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of things happening to the world which are being directed by the darker side to bring the vibration down. So there's a lot happening at the moment. With all the strange things that have gone on in the last two years, we've actually lost control of what we want for our lives. Very few people sit down and think, where do I want to be? <clears throat> what do I want to do? So it's important to look at what is important in our lives, which is where the workbook comes in. Um, I found this quote from Amit Ray, which seems very appropriate for what we are experiencing. And the quote is, it does not matter how long you are spending on earth, how much money you have gathered, how much attention you have received. Mm -hmm. It is the amount of positive vibration that you have radiated in life that matters. That's what we take with us when we cross over. It's, <clears throat> it's our light, it's our vibra high vibration. It's not our money, it's not our wealth, it's not our... Um, status in the world, none of those things matter. The questions we need to ask ourselves is what are we active, actively doing to raise our vibration? And can we do more? Are we doing enough to, to really improve our situation? And this is the, the real reason we wrote the, both the, um, <coughs> the book Thriving in the New Vibration and the workbook. And the workbook gives you a very easy way to get into it and start addressing some of these issues. We need to reclaim our connection with the divine. There are a number of things that indicate we have lost our connection with the divine. And we need to reestablish that connection. The first sign that things are going wrong is when we're focusing on the material world. Um, we look at our identity and the significance we give it and we give it more power than our connection with spirit and knowing our true self you know it's more important than I'm a CEO of this company or, or a, uh, a film star or a rock star than 
our spiritual development. And of course, that's not true. Our spiritual well-being is much more important. Uh, have we attached too much um, effort to our third dimension reality? Um, is our consciousness only focusing on our five senses? There's so much more out there. We can sense much beyond the um, five senses by looking at energy. So are we limiting ourselves? Do we totally identify ourselves as just this physical body? When forgetting that we have a spiritual body and so much more. We are a spiritual being in a physical body. And for many of us, that connection to our spiritual self has been severed. This loss of connection causes the materialistic focus we see around us. There is an attachment to the stories we make up about ourselves. When we recognize that our stories are not us, we can reclaim our attachment to our soul instantly. So why did we write the workbook? It's helping us gain, regain control of our lives. It's a self-help book and a guide to clearing ourselves of negative influences. Because if we have negative influences in ourselves, it's bringing our vibration down. And if we haven't got a high vibration, we can't shine our light into the world. Once we have gone through the wake up stage of our evolution, we step into the unknown. It's like we have a clean slate and we need to decide who we are and what we really want for our future life. We have more power than we realize. We're actually in this state now, this very point now, choosing what we want in our future life. Do we want to continue with the way we were going? Do we want to continue worrying about uh, whether we've got enough money, whether we have enough food, things like that? Or do we want to focus on what the world can be like? if we put a high vibration into it. And if enough people are thinking like that, yeah. you're gonna manifest it a lot quicker. Exactly, yeah. because we do have the power, power to manifest things at the moment. Our book provides a structured way to get, negotiate this path of evolution and provides a way to help you solve the obstacles that are blocking your growth. In the workbook, we start by helping you to find your life's purpose. Once you know why you're here and can see the bigger picture, uh, it all comes into perspective and you realize uh, that it is important to be working on uh, what you really love and what you really want to do. And it's not about just doing any job you can just to get money. It's about actually really being here and, and acknowledging you're here to learn and to to live this life. Um, where are we? <laughs> it's important to focus on where you need to put your energy and doing what we came to earth to do. Mm -hmm. The next step is to identify your beliefs. Mm -hmm. We mentioned earlier that our beliefs control our life. Depending on what we believe, depending depends on what we will allow or accept as reality in our life. So we actually control reality by our beliefs. So in the workbook, we help you to look at what are your beliefs? What is stopping you doing things? Part of living is to enjoy being here. And only you can determine how much joy you bring into your life. And your beliefs are actually controlling how much joy you'll, you'll allow in. I said earlier, we're at war and there are negative influences in the, this world who do not want us to evolve. And we carry a lot of those negative influences in our body. Um, as we go through life, we collect those negative influences and we store them in our body. And 
that all the time they're bringing our vibration down, causing illness, causing us to feel depressed and not happy. And it's like a cloud we carry around us that brings us down. Um, part of the book, um, our workbook, we take you through a series of exercises to identify what those negative influences are. And um, we help you remove them because you do have the power to remove these things. They don't have to stay with you. So you can work on that. Almost at the end. You've written another book? Yeah, written another <laughs> book. Um, and the next phase of our workbook is looking after ourselves. Mm. And <clears throat> as we involve, We become <clears throat> we can become much more sensitive to the food we eat mm -hmm. and to the environment around us. We really sabotage ourselves by eating badly, <laughs> by having a lot of um, negative environmental influences around us. Uh, there's lots of pollution. There's lots of uh, pesticides in the garden. There's there's pesticides on our food. There's electromagnetic um, corruption in our houses. So we basically sabotage ourselves a lot. And the book helps you look at what is going on in your life, what you have in your house that you shouldn't really, or you should reduce uh, as much as you can. Um, it's important to come from our heart. And every day, we focus on making choices that are heart driven and to raise our vibration because we can insert, insert a positive influence on the world. And part of our job here is to radiate light. There are grids around the world and we need to energize those grids because we need to encourage other people to break out of their um, cocoon and to start evolving themselves. And they can only do that if they can see light and they can see where they're going. Every time we accept something we know is wrong or harmful, we actually help the dark side. So we need to be very careful on our thoughts. So I hope I have encouraged you to get a copy of our workbook. It is available <laughs> on Amazon Books. It's, it's very inexpensive and it will give you a way to work through these things easily and to get a better appreciation of what is happening in your world and how to improve it and how to bring your light into the world so i hope you enjoyed that and uh, thank you for listening to me Thank you, Chris. I feel like you have given like a healing session. I'm feeling <laughs> in my body and I feel like I'm going to re rewatch and re-listen to all what you said because there's a lot of wisdom in it. Um, thank you very much. I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And also what's really interesting is that it's all related to um, the books, you know, that we are presenting today. So it started with the, um, actually my my book, um, uh, Wisdom of the Rose, uh, of the Mystic Rose is just out. And it started from there because people were asking me about the, a temple, what is a temple? Mm -hmm. uh, and I was explaining that a temple is, an, it's not only a physical place, but it's also an ether place. Uh, there are also astral temples where, they are like a point of connection, a point of connection between different realms, different geographic places, different uh, uh, state of being, different consciousness. They act like doorways. And these doorways in the physical plane here on earth, there are many, there are really many. Um, and they help us, depending on the temples and their energy, they help us to realign our energies they can help us to remember who we are and also we can do work in some temples where we can radiate 
also energy you were talking about that so it brought me to this book which is called the power of sacred uh, location written by uh, lydia gian and uh, arturo ponce de leon um, it's it's a very interesting book very technical book just i need to say i need to say it's very technical in some parts and uh, you know they talk about uh, gravity they talk about tectonic <laughs> things they, they so if you are not in the field it might be a bit you know they would talk about um, many things so if you are not in the field it might be difficult to understand but um I, I didn't finish it yet. I'm, I'm still going through it because I'm reading different books at the same time. But there are some parts where they talk about the physical body and the influence it can get uh, from some geographic locations. Mm -hmm. So, for example, they have noticed um, and they talk with, about experiments, right? This, these are not theories. These are based on researches, scientific researches. Uh, and they talk about the geographic, uh, the geophysical anomalies and their impact on our health, uh, causing uh, cancer incidents. I see Chris and Maggie looking we, for we, something. We're just looking for our sacred book with all the sites in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, mm, so they talk also about, yeah. uh, you found it? Yes. Yes, awesome. Sacred Earth, Sacred Stones. Oh my God, I wanted that book too. <laughs> it's a wonderful book. And we were going through to see how many places we've been to. Yes. And the difference, so yes and the difference it makes when we go there yes and it really lifts your energy exactly mm -hmm. uh, so also they talk about the the effect like they noticed in some cities uh, like paris where there are some places people are more sick than other places you know yeah. Definitely. Yes, there are like, you know, uh, a pollution and things like that, but there is something about the physical location that has mm -hmm. a big impact. So uh, anyway, it's, it's very interesting. I'm still going through it um, and learning a lot. Uh, they talk about gamma rays. They talk about the, um, uh, the, the, the geomet geometrical, geochemical fields. Uh, they, they talk about a lot of things. So it's a small book. It's not very heavy. Uh, to read, but I feel like we came at the moment to uh, uh, we came to a time where we need to understand what influences our bodies and what we influence with our bodies. Mm. So there is this an interconnection, interrelationship with where we live and where we go. And I was in in the UK last month where I visited some places um, that were sacred and some places that were not in harmony and I suffered it from, from physical and spiritual perspective. So now I feel I will be more aware about where, where I go and also what to do. You know, mm -hmm. the protections, the different protections we use, the prayers we use, but also about the intentions of why we go to a place. Mm. as a temple we we are moving as a temple and we visit other temples so we have to recognize this aspect uh, in our lives <clears throat> do you remember in hong kong yes we went to it was interesting in hong <laughs> kong there's a huge huge Buddha on the top of this was it a mountain hill hill <clears throat> absolutely huge and you get a cable car to go up there and um <clears throat> We got up there and everybody was going up. There's 200 odd steps you had to go up to to get to the Buddha. And we got up there and we thought, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah, and the energy we, was we couldn't quiet. feel anything at all. We came down and we walked just a little way away just to have a look at the Buddha. And all of a sudden it was the energy just absolutely infused us. And we just stood there and people were just walking by, not aware of the energy. But that was for us, that was where it was concentrated. But it's interesting. Yes, there is a money of a movie called the Indian, the Indian initiation or the Indian secret. I forgot the name of the movie, but uh, they were standing in, in, in the, one of the last parts of the movie. The, the actors were standing in a place and they become they became invisible to the enemy. 
Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. They were standing in a sacred space and that made their energy so high and they were in so much joy that they became invisible. Yeah. So there is this that, that I believe, magic, yeah. yes, this magical aspect of the sacred location and mm. the, how how it can have an impact on not only our visibility but on the world mm. you know, what we diffuse to the world and how we are seen in the world mm. Mm. yeah we had another one was it in Italy oh we went to um St Francis of Assisi his <coughs> his chapel inside of that yeah. um, mm -hmm. cathedral and you've got these door, big doors going in and you've got all these murals and there's a little door on the side. And I was with my daughter and, and Chris at the time. We walked in and we went, <clears throat> couldn't feel anything. And everybody's going, oh, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. And I, I'm sure it was for them. But we went out the side door and all of a sudden it was <clears throat> like that. The energy just hit us and we just stood there. I don't know how long we stood there for, but it was, <laughs> we were just infused with this wonderful energy. And I thought... It's not always these dramatic things that you're looking for. It's the little things. And I think most people are confused with that. They're looking for something really big to focus on. And it's not. It's just something small, but it, it contains the energy. And that also is related to what we see and who sees things. Mm. You know, I feel also the big things, like, for example, in some temples and some churches, they are dist distractions, distractions yeah. for what is really important so that there is what you see with the eyes and there is what you see with the heart mm, there are yes. different things so i was i have been thinking the last weeks about how to refine the way i see things it's not about you know like visualization or um, clairvoyance there is something else with the heart and as we live in a confused world and in confused mind we can't see things clearly from a hard perspective and we take decisions that are not aligned with what we are. Mm -hmm. So I have been really meditating over this question that starts with the clarity of the mind. We have to get clear mind and we have to settle. We have to meditate and we have to start making void in order for the heart to start sensing the different voices uh, that harmonious. It's, a, it's a little bit like I was talking about. <clears throat> My voice is going. Um, <clears throat> but if we just rely on our sight, <clears throat> we're not <clears throat> we're not getting the full information. No, we have to come from the heart. We and we've been told more and more we need to come from the heart to feel from the heart to see if it resonates with us because the heart has its own brain and we don't use that enough. Yes. Um, so we need to um, simulate it to grow it. And so that when we listen, whether we're listening to something, um, looking at something, first thing we do is, okay, how does my heart respond? Yeah. And normally we go, well, I think this, I think that, but it's not this. How does your heart respond? How does it feel too? How, yeah, does, how it does it feel? feel? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, it was always a pleasure as always. <laughs> Um, so I just uh, um, thank our viewers to be here and to listen to us and uh, let us know what you thought about these books, uh, how you like them. Check out uh, Chris's books and Maggie's books and also my new book uh, on Amazon, available on Amazon now. I'm going to present it soon. Please give me time. As always, I'm, I have a lot of work. So <laughs> I will come whenever I, I, I feel like to, <laughs> have to be here. So uh, have a lovely day and uh, talk to you soon. Mm -hmm. Nice talking to you. Bye. Bye.